So I want to bring in Alan Kilsheimer. He is president and CEO of KCE Structural Engineers. Alan, welcome. Thank you for being with us. So, of course, as you know, the search has now sadly moved into the recovery phase. What do you make of the decision to end the search and rescue? Do you think it was the right time? Well, <clears throat> the people that made that decision are experts in their field, and, and I'm not an expert in how long people can survive in certain circumstances. But having been around a number of collapses before, uh, I know uh, I don't believe in any of them were we ever able to recover anybody at this length of time, um, given the amount of concrete that fell on top of them. Yes, and you have worked on other major disasters like the 9-11 terrorist attack. You've been hired to investigate this tragic collapse. Where do you even begin in terms of determining what caused this building to collapse? Well, there's a process that we always go through, which is you first come up with a, a dozen, two dozen, three dozen things that you think might be a possibility that it could have caused something like this based on your experience. And then you attempt to eliminate those one at a time. As you find facts that allow you to eliminate them, you also find facts that add more to them. You, you do that process by looking at all the available drawings, uh, running engineering computer models, 3D models of the building in various configurations, doing materials mm -hmm. testing of the concrete and the steel, trying to look at how things lay in the pile, um, and, and evaluating the hundreds of different ideas that I'm getting every day from people all over the country that understand, they believe they understand why this happened. And you look at all those things because you never know somebody might come up with an idea that is merit. Uh, so it's a, it, it, as I've said to people before, it's like taking three 3,000 piece puzzles and throwing them up in the air and then sweeping them up on the floor in a huge pile and then trying to put them back together properly. And you have uh, begun the investigation, correct? What has your investigation uncovered so far in the preliminary phases? Um, where is it leading you? Well, we, we started Friday, the day after the collapse. Uh, it, it's not leading us to anywhere yet. We're still, uh, we don't have, we're not going to interfere with the rescue and recovery operation that's going on at the site. So we don't have materials to sample test yet. But what we do have is there's a building two doors away that was done with a similar set of drawings. They're not exactly the same. And that building is accessible to us. The condo board has allowed us in there. So we are looking at things in that building, taking samples, doing measurements from that building that help us maybe understand some of the things we haven't yet been able to see in the collapsed South building. Uh, usually you don't have that luxury of, of, a, of a science lab right next door, but that's what we have here, here now. Right. And, and was that building done by the same builder and developer as well? It was the same developer, as I understand it. I don't know about the builder. It was the same architect and engineer, but I don't know about the builder. And then we did see uh, North Miami Beach order the evacuation of a condo building about five miles away from the site of the Surfside building collapse. Are you concerned about other buildings like this in Florida potentially having similar structural issues? Well, remember, I don't know if there were structural issues in the South Building or not. I know it fell down, but I don't know why it fell down, right? Uh, there's usually a trigger that makes it fall down. At the, at the September 11th, we knew what the triggers were, right? They were planes. At Oklahoma City, there was a bomb. Here, we don't know what the trigger is. So the idea is to try and find the trigger and, and then see if anything that we see in our investigation would have made the trigger not end up the way it did if it would have been mm -hmm. different than that it was in the field in the first place. So mm -hmm. we're not being led to any place. Uh, you know, th there are things that we had in our list that we put near the bottom of the pile. We haven't eliminated anything 100% mm -hmm. yet. Um, and we keep hearing things that we research. So uh, it's not leading any place except to understand that we have a, a lot of work that we have to do to understand all this.
And Ellen, you mentioned the triggers. Of course, 9-11, it was a plane, and Oklahoma City, it was a bombing. So these were unnatural triggers, man-made triggers, if you will. Um, is it potential to have natural triggers, such as, you know, rising seawater or something that has to do with the environment? That, that is always a possibility. I mean, uh, it's sometimes, uh, you know, when not in this circumstance, but when you see or hear about somebody who dies of natural causes, they they, they listed the death was this, but it was contributed to by this, right? So that that's the kind of thing that probably is going on here. Um, we just need to try and find the trigger. There's not enough factual evidence yet to do that, and we have a long way to go to be able to figure that out. All right. Well, Alan Kilsheimer, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your copious insight uh, into buildings with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.